Welcome back, Zero K fans, to more Nanolids at Dawn and the actual last match for tonight. Bit of an encore, as it were. Dying for an Orphelia is an actual live game, because, well, they wanted to play a live game. So, hey, let's do that. I want to play a live game. They were in stream chat, talking about the stream. So, let's do this. Rover's coming out for Orphelius and Dying for an going for Cloaky Bots eventually. So, you know, have that. And that is, I mean, I like, I like Rover's on this map. It's one of those maps that's interesting because it is very flat. I mean, it's very flat. There's a few hills here and there, but it's essentially just flat land. So there's not a whole lot to be contested outside of, you know, a lane in the top, and there's a little bit of a hill going to the south and the northeast. But the thing is, the speed at which you can go across this with vehicles is actually kind of relevant. It always is. The fact that it is a wide open area, yeah, it's flat, and it's there's not a whole lot of obstacles, but it is wide open. It gives room for the maneuvering to work really well. It gives room for a lot of interesting tactics to happen as well. Like, just, it's... Having war, having vehicles allows you to just get anywhere you need to when you need to. It also means you have fencers, which means you basically have defenders as you go in, as Orphelius tries to pull off a RAR, moving in with an upgrading commander. Trying to take the center as quickly as possible, at the very least. I'm not sure if they actually are trying to just take the center, because that's what you do on this map, is take the center section. As well as try to hold on the southwest, which Dying Throne at this point is having a much easier time holding. But Orphelius, they've definitely got the center. What do I have for their actual construction? Rocket launcher and armor. Not a bad pick. At this point, though, Orphelius not building a whole lot from their factory, not even getting a mason yet. Going for Scorchers as well. This is a highly aggressive opening from both players. No one's going for the expansions. No one's going for pretty much anything but as much aggression as they can. Getting in, trying to get rid of, well, Dying Prince Commander. Orphelius could be putting themselves at great risk in the process. The fence are doing a decent job at getting rid of... Or, Started doing a decent job of getting rid of the skirmishers coming in from Dying for inside, but Dying for at this point, they're holding that pretty well. Rocket launcher, advanced targeting system, so range, not as much armor. So Orphelius' commander has a bit more HP, 600 more HP to be precise. But a question, the question arises, how well can Orphelius' commander dodge? And the answer is not very. Not in that one case, that is enough to stop it. I mean, I feel like I'm playing, I'm not casting battle right right now, right? Like, this isn't, this is still 0 k okay, because it feels like it's just a matter of no, firing off shots and dodging. But that is exactly what's happening. Dying for still a slight disadvantage. Orphelius, however, needs to be able to dodge an entire small army's worth of Ronin on top of Dying Friend's commander's rocket launcher. While Dying Friend needs to dodge Orphelius' rocket launcher or have the Ronin take the hits. Oh, and Orphelius so close to death. Really nice dodging, though. Actually, wait. This, yeah, this is manual. This is all manual. The fact that there's green arrows. Orphelius... They're, they're clicking in order to dodge, and it's just barely enough. Oh, man. Dying Friend still, I'd say, won that engagement. Orphelius has to repair themselves, and these glaives... These glaives are death. These glaives are it. Unless Orphelius can fire off one more rocket. There's the rocket! And that does it. Orphelius is just barely surviving the glaive assault coming as revenge. Dying Friend's commander is still in a healthier position, but now Orphelius, they have their Scorchers up. They have... A really good army setup, actually. Get rid of Dime Friends Commander. The Glaives can't stop it. The Scorch is coming in. Dime Friends Rocket Launcher can't stop it. Dime Friends Commander is going down. And Orphelius taking the last laugh and Dime Friends throwing in the towel. Few minutes game, but hey, it was something. Because, of course, it's Avalanche. It had to be Avalanche. Avalanche is always, almost always a short game. But hey, a really exciting short game. A really good set of commander fights there. And like I said, I. I forgot what game I was casting for a second. I mean, okay, obviously there's you don't have the WAS movement or the or multiple abilities, but still moving around, trying to dodge shots, playing around like that. That was still a thing that happened. That was, that was still the way that match went. Also with a few units here and there. So, cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So, thank you very much for watching. Really good way to have that end off is exciting commander match. And until next time, have a good night, everyone.